Hello everyone! The newest chapter of Fortnite is wrapping up its first season, so in this video I'd like to take a look at the story it told and what it sets up for the future of the game. On the surface, all you probably saw was that Peely was captured at the start of the season, and then he was rescued at the end, with nothing in between. And you pretty much would be correct. This season was pretty dry in terms of lore. However, when you dig a little deeper, the real story starts to reveal itself deep below the surface. So strap in and join me as we explore the story behind Fortnite Underground. As always, I try to explain my videos in a way that people who know nothing about Fortnite would understand, so for a quick explanation, Fortnite is a battle royale game where you and 99 other players compete to be the last player standing, and the story is told mostly in the background through end of season live events, start of season cinematic trailers, and quest dialogues that only show up for a few seconds, sometimes with voice acting and sometimes without, so it can be difficult to keep track of everything going on. In lore, you play on an island that is in the center of the Omniverse, with characters and factions fighting for control over the island and the Zero Point, a massive source of energy and the origin point of the Big Bang that created every reality. A group known as the Imagined Order, founded by an immortal man known as Geno, took control over the Zero Point for some time and forced people to fight in their 22 minute time loop to study them, which is the reason behind why characters fight in Fortnite. Every time someone exits a loop, they leave behind a snapshot of themselves, which is basically an exact replica from that point in time that usually goes on to evolve and behave differently than their original version, as seen with Batman in his snapshot. In the last season, John Jones went back in time to the Chapter 1 island with the assistance of Dr. Sloan, one of the former leaders of the Imagined Order. John Jones is also a former member of the Imagined Order and has the most snapshots of himself in Fortnite. And going back in time, Jones was tasked to retrieve something but not alter any past events. It's unsure what Jones accomplished, but it appears he retrieved the rocket that was used in Chapter 1 Season X and attached his time machine to it, possibly accidentally altering the time stream as certain events in OG happened differently, but we're not 100% sure at this time. At the end of OG, the time machine and rocket caused a black hole again, but this time created a big bang and allowed the loopers to traverse the omniverse, going to different realities such as the Lego reality, festival reality, and rocket racing reality, along with the main Battle Royale reality that's always been seen at the center of the Omniverse. But that could be different now, and only time will tell. But if you'd like to learn more about the Fortnite storyline leading up to this point, I have a playlist set up with all of Chapter 4 covered, and the main story behind Chapter 1 as well, so go check those out to get caught up. But for now, on to Chapter 5. This season we have a cinematic trailer like we usually do, however, it has gameplay elements mixed in which tracks for this season as the story wasn't really the main focus. As the trailer kicks off, we get our first look at the new island. We pan down into an abandoned subway station where we see the main characters and protagonists for this season, Hope and John Jones. We see their makeshift face completely ransacked as Jones finds Peely's sticker with a ransom note on the back saying we have your banana. Enraged. Jones gears up as he plans for battle. I'll skip through this part, but we get glimpses of characters who play a role in this season, as well as collaboration characters like Peter Griffin and Solid Snake. At the end of the trailer though, we see Jones and Hope making a final stand on top of the train in a shootout against their enemies. In the past, there's usually been some type of dialogue quest where we learn more about the characters during the season, but this season didn't have any at all to the very end, making it pretty anticlimactic. So the information that we did learn about the story and characters was seen in their skin descriptions, bios on their collection pages, small details on loading screens, as well as lyrics in the music packs and secrets hidden around the island, which is what we'll take a look at first. The Chapter 5 island is heavily inspired by Europe. Every POI this season is new and running through all of them real quick, we have Rebel's Roost, Lavish Lair, Classy Quartz, Ritzy Riviera, Reckless Railways, Grand Glacier, Ruined Reels, Pleasant Plaza, Fencing Fields, Hazy Hillside, and Snooty Steps. For locations such as Snooty Steps, Ritzy Riviera, and Pleasant Piazza, we can see Italian influence in the architecture. Ruined Reels is based off of a Greek amphitheater, Hazy Hillside has German-style infrastructure, and Fencing Fields has a vineyard that can be seen in places such as Italy and Spain. Europe has train systems that go all over it, and the Chapter 5 island has a train that goes around the island as well. There's multiple train stations too, and at these stations, announcements can be heard in different European languages, such as German being heard at the estate and forest stations, Greek at the Reckless Railway Station, Italian at the Orchard Station, and French at the Riviera and Snooty Stations. And when fighting the society members, Spanish guitar can be heard in their themes. Just listen real quick. Speaking of the society, let's take a look at them. 
They're a group of elites who run the businesses all around the island, such as the Grand Glacier Hotel and the Grand Station at Reckless Railways. Even though on the surface they may appear as if they have good intentions, they're a group of criminals looking to gain power at the sake of others. But let's take a look at their members. And let's get the elephant in the room out of the way first. Peter Griffin from the hit show Family Guy joined up as a member of the society this season. He's decked out in gold-plated armor to protect him, and he runs snooty steps on the island. It's likely that in lore this is around the time they became a millionaire in Family Guy, explaining why he joined up with the society. They also gave him one of the medallions, giving him incentive to join up with them. And prior to arriving to the island, he had an examination with the Fortnite character Meowsles, who gave Peter an expired slurp juice, giving Peter his strength. The next character we should take a look at is Montague. For his physical appearance, he has black and white hair, heterochromia, giving him two different eye colors, and wears an amulet, possibly giving him his powers. He's an analog to the character from Chapter 2, Midas. Montague is the founder of the society, like how Midas was to Ghost and Shadow. Montague's body can transform into diamond like how Midas's can turn into gold. If you want to learn more about Midas and how he impacted the Fortnite storyline, my next Fortnite lore video I have planned will be about him and his involvement, so stay on the lookout for that within the next month. Montague is also a French master thief and the owner of the Grand Glacier Hotel. Montague also believed that wealth is power and power is everything. Not really too much depth to him, but just like how Midas had a big cat part on Meowsles, Montague has one in Oscar. Oscar is a buff British humanoid tiger who's described as big, bad, and bossy. On top of being wealthy, like the other members of the society, the other members of so the other members of society. On top of being wealthy, like the other members of the society, of the society. On top of being bought, on top of being wealthy, like the other members of the society, of the society, members of the society. On top of being wealthy, like the other members of the society, he's a hunter, gardener, and owner of the lavish Lair Mansion. It's unknown why he joined the society, and a character who I'll talk about in a bit, Hope, says that she hopes Oscar will leave the society and turn over a new leaf. Oscar also appears to have some type of electrokinesis as well. Next up for the members, we have the owner of the fencing fields Flowberry Farm, Nisha. Nisha appears to be an Indian woman based off of her name and appearance. She also has a brother, Cavell, who is described as a loyal defender of fencing fields. From what we can tell, Nisha and Cavell are both duos who have a knack for fencing. Nisha inherited the farm from her family at some point before the season, and it appears the power and wealth she gained from the farm and from joining the society drew a divide between her and her brother. Cavell is part of the society as well, but it might be so he can stay close to his sister and protect her. Hope goes on to say that she hopes Nisha can walk away from the society in the future and rebuild relations with her brother. Now before I get to the main member, I'd like to take a look at some of the elite of the society. We have the Goldfish, Lustrous Lux, Gunslinger Calamity, Elite Archetype, Siren, and Stashed, who are all characters who have been around for a while, now joined up with the society for various and unknown reasons. There's Killian, a cyborg operator who acts on the behalf of the more important members of the society, and the Legion elites and grunts who guard the leading members of the society. But for the last member, we have Valeria. She's the owner of the Reckless Railway's Grand Station, and is recognized by her fur coat, fiery red and black hair, and pyrokinesis powers. Although she's wealthy, like the other members of the society, her quest for power comes from attaining knowledge rather than more money. But before we get into her story for this season, let's take a look at the group fighting back against the society for this season, the Underground. As I said, the Underground is literally an underground group fighting against the society to stop their tyranny. They have quite a few bases around the island with their main one being a caved in abandoned subway station and various other bases such as the Rebels Ruse Villa that was reclaimed from the society by the Underground an abandoned sawmill called Slumberyard, and small houses scattered throughout the island with many locations right by the various society bases. The underground was founded by Hope. She's recognizable by her blue hair and blue and black clothing with cat themed attire as well. We don't know too much about her, but she seems to be familiar with the other characters this season and is actually the younger sister of Valeria. Hope is basically your stereotypical 90s punk character who wants to fight against a man and wants everyone to be free, but always hopeful that people can change as her name suggests. As the Society had Peter Griffin as a collaboration character in their ranks, the Underground has some as well, with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Master Splinter joining the Underground in their war against the Society. As I'm sure you know, the Ninja Turtles and Splinter got their intelligence and humanoid forms from the ooze that got all over them when they fell into the sewers, and went on to fight the Foot Clan in many iterations with their ninjutsu skills. It's unknown how they got to the island, but their base is set up in the Underground HQ. Their friend and reporter April O'Neil arrived on the island and assisted them throughout the season, but their arch nemesis and leader of the Foot Clan, Shredder, came to the island as well, possibly joining ranks with the Society, as the Foot Clan banners can be seen at the Society bases. There's some other members of the Underground who appear this season, 
albeit less important for the story, but I want to mention them anyways. We have Star Oakley, an archer and ace of the underground, Sonar, a sound expert who spent his whole life listening to the island, and Rufus, a raccoon who is a king of garbage. For allies and possible members, we have Silas Hex, he's a snake possessing a human body, heir to the Hesk fortune, and the last elite standing against the society, but also quietly financing the underground's efforts. There's Contract Giller, who mentions the society needs to be taken down, and there's also Steel Sight, a friend of Hope's, and Dara, an ally of Jonesy, who both help aid the underground. And speaking of Jonesy, John Jones is one of the main members of the underground this season. I've covered him in a lot of the Fortnite lore in the past, so go check out previous videos if you want to learn more about him. Peely is the other main member, who is a longtime friend of Jonesy, and also another main character of the Fortnite storyline. And now, let's get into the story for this season. Some time has passed since the Big Bang incident in the OG season, and on this new island, the society has taken control. Hope founded the underground, and Jones and Peely joined up with their cause to prevent the society's tyranny. However, the society kidnapped Peely, which is where the season starts. Over the course of the season, we learn that Valeria kidnapped Peely as a bargaining chip to get information out of Jones about the Zero Point, the island, and all the secrets of the Omniverse Jones knows. This isn't confirmed or anything, but I don't think the other society members realize what Valeria's angle is and probably just want to use Peely to get the underground to give up. As I said previously though, we don't get too much information throughout the season through quest logs or anything like that, but we do get some information through the loading screens. With these loading screens, along with the end of season quests, we learn that Peely is being moved from place to place in order to make his rescue more difficult. In Oscar's loading screen, we see Peely being held hostage at the mansion as Oscar makes a phone call to Jones, taunting him, although Peely doesn't seem to mind. In Nisha's loading screen, we can see him squirting Flowberry Fizz all over some guards as Nisha's just over the whole thing. Peely's just the type of guy to not really have any idea what's going on if you haven't figured that out already. Although not listed as a member of either group and doesn't have special dialogue with other characters this season, Salad Snake from the Metal Gear game franchise showed up to the island this season as well, as I mentioned before on the trailer. In his loading screen, we can see him sneaking onto the Society's yacht, it's actually Midas' yacht repurposed, and gaining information on the Society. So he might have helped Jones and Hope to locate Peely. Near the end of the season, Jones and Hope gear up and storm each base to find Peely. In Jones' loading screen, we can see him confront Valeria about the location of Peely and eventually rescue him as he was being held at fencing fields guarded by Nisha. And after rescuing Peely, it looks like they put a stop to the Society, at least for the time being. However, Valeria doesn't seem to mind that her plans were stopped. As I mentioned before, Valeria believes knowledge is power. In her loading screen, she could be seen researching Jones in the Zero Point in a strange box. This box could also be seen in Valeria's notebook, along with a depiction of a moth. With the design of the box, the Greek ruins around the island, and Greek skins in the skin survey seen by keen-eyed players, people began theorizing that this is Pandora's box. I'm sure you guys have all heard the legends on Pandora's box, but for a quick summary, Pandora was the first human woman created by Hephaestus, the god of artisans, blacksmiths, carpenters, craftsmen, fire, metallurgy, metalworking, sculptures, and volcanoes at the order of Zeus, the king of the gods on Mount Olympus, and the god of the sky, thunder, lightning, law, and order. In the mythology, Pandora opened this box, sometimes depicted as a jar, vase, or other container, left in the care of her husband, and this box unleashed all forms of evil and curses onto the world, including sickness and death. It's also said that the last thing inside the box was Hope, which I gotta say is either a huge coincidence or done on purpose since the main character this season is named Hope. But it's also very similar to the Bible when Eve takes a bite of the forbidden fruit of knowledge of good and evil and unleashed sin onto the world, so Valeria is probably looking to gain knowledge in a similar sense from the box. Sometime later, a woman by the name Odyssey arrives to the island. She's described as an angel spirit of adventure and also almost looks like a female version of the angels from the last chapter. Go check out those videos if you want to know who that is. I should mention her namesake, the Odyssey by Homer. It's an ancient Greek epic poem describing Odysseus, king of Ithaca, on his journey home from the Trojan War, the thing where the Trojan horse comes from. Odysseus meets many different characters and creatures on his journey to get back to his wife and son, such as gods like Zeus, Poseidon, the Cyclops Polyphemus, the nymph Calypso, and Agamemnon, the former king of Mycenae. I remember reading this book when I was younger and enjoyed it, so go check it out. But when Odyssey arrived to the island, she revealed information such as the special medallions the society members have are shards of mysterious power from the past. So Peter Griffin is a part of Greek mythology now, basically. At the end of the season, you the Looper helps Odyssey uncover secrets of the Greek ruins and reconstruct an ancient mosaic out of scattered pieces to reveal a depiction of Cerberus, the three-headed dog of Hades, the god of the dead, and guardian of the underworld that prevents souls from escaping. 
When meeting different characters, Odyssey seems to recognize Hope as she says the whispers were true, tells Jones that he wandered from his path but destiny isn't done with him, and tells Valeria that she refuses to give her answers and that Valeria will walk her own path and bear her consequences. And it seems that Valeria proceeds down the path as cracks started forming on the ground near ruined reels, the previously mentioned Greek amphitheater, and a giant hand emerged from the island with Pandora's box chained to it, depicting Zeus, Ares, Cerberus, and Hades. After loopers around the island damaged the chains enough, they broke the chains causing the box to fall and open, and Pandora's box now unleashed onto the island, setting the stage for the next season. But before I wrap things up, there's one more thing I should mention. In Greek mythology, there exists a character known as Atlas. He's one of the titans, the deities in existence before the more well-known Greek gods. Atlas was cursed to hold up the heavens for all eternity, although some misconceptions in other forms of media depict him holding up the earth. If you take a look at the survey skins, there's one character that sticks out. This character's arm almost looks exactly the same as the arm sticking out of the island with Pandora's box, and the survey art shows what looks to be the zero point inside of him. So who's to say that the zero point hasn't taken humanoid form and become Atlas, now holding up the island this chapter? Keep that in mind for the future. But with that, I just want to thank you guys for watching. I know I said I'll be covering chapter 2 next, but be sure that's the next Fortnite lore video I have planned, and it's coming soon, so don't worry. It just takes a lot longer than I'd like to get these videos out, so I just want to apologize and ask you just please be understanding. But if you do want to see more content from me, I try to get up multiple shorts a week and I've been live streaming a lot more. I also have a second channel where I upload videos about mysteries, so go check that out too if that's something you're interested in. But before I close this video out, I've seen people not understand the direction that the season's going, but it makes sense. If you don't know, all the Fortnite islands are named after Greek gods, and those names represent the islands and stories pretty well. Going in order starting with chapter 1, we have Athena, Apollo, Artemis, Asteria, and now Helios. Apollo and Artemis are twins in Greek mythology, just like how the Chapter 2 and Chapter 3 islands were one island, just different sides flipped over. And story-wise, just think of it as characters fighting over trivial things while greater powers lie below them, and one character gets in over their head and unleashes those powers after messing with things they shouldn't. But that's enough for now. Please like and subscribe for more content like this, and let me know that you're interested in my videos, and leave comments for what you liked, disliked, and what I can do better in the future, and suggestions for video topics. But thank you guys one more time, and I'll see you in the next one.